Hi everybody, this is Parker from DustPrepChampions.com. Here's another GED Math Practice Problem of the Day. This one is also, like yesterday's, this has to do with the quadratic formula and quadratic equations. I want you to solve 2x squared minus 5x minus 12 for x, but I want you to do it using the quadratic formula instead of using factoring like we did yesterday. So go ahead, pause the video, and try this out. Okay, so hopefully you just had a chance to pause the video and try this, but if not, that's okay, we'll go through it. So the two things that you need to know here is, first of all, 2x squared minus 5x minus 12 is a quadratic equation. It's not something that you can do by trying to rearrange this and try to get x by itself. Okay, you can't do it unless you use the these two methods. There's the factoring method, which I showed you in yesterday's video, or you can use the solution to the quadratic equation, aka the quadratic formula, which is what we see down here. I'm circling it right now on the screen. x equals the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. That is your quadratic formula, aka your solution to the quadratic equation. And your quadratic equation is what you see right here, your ax squared plus bx plus c. So again, like I said, we're not going to use factoring. I just want you to take this 2x squared minus 5x minus 12 and plug that into the quadratic formula and you're going to get an answer. You've got to do it for both plus and for minus. So let me, let's define our terms here. So here's what we've got. So let me write the standard form of the quadratic equation down here. Right, so we see that our a term is going to be 2. Okay, so 2 equals a. And then we see that negative 5 is going to be our b. Okay, and you want to make sure that you bring that negative 5. Okay, don't forget that. So negative 5 equals b. And then lastly, we see here we've got negative 5, x minus 12. Okay, so minus 12 is going to be our c. And again, we need to make sure that we've got that negative sign. So c is going to equal negative 12. Okay, so let me put a box around this. And now we've got to do some mathematical work here. And what we're going to do is we're going to substitute each of these values, this 2, we're going to put that into the formula for where we see a is. And what we're going to do then is we're going to take this negative 5 for b and we're going to substitute that into the formula where we see our b's. And then we're going to take our c, which is negative 12, and you guessed it, we're going to plug it right in here for c. And we'll use some order of operations rules to do this, and it's going to spit out our answers. So let me clear these out here so we've got some room to work. And so now let's go ahead and start doing that. So we're going to have to do this for plus and for minus. So let me start off with plus here. So we've got the opposite of b. So since we've got negative 5 here, right, we want to plug in the opposite of b. So we'll just put in 5 here. The opposite of negative 5 is 5. Okay, so another way to look at that is let's say, so we need to put the opposite, we need to put negative b here. So here's our negative, and then let's plug in b, which is negative 5. Okay, so the negative times negative 5 just gives us positive. So we don't even need to write that. We'll just put 5 here. So our b term is 5. And we're going to start off with plus, like I said. So we'll do plus the square root of b squared. So what we do is we're going to take this negative 5 and we'll plug it in right here. And we've got this negative 5 squared minus 4 times a times c. So here's our 4, and we're going to multiply that by a. So our a is equal to 2, so we put a 2 right here. And then we've got c, which is negative 12, so we put negative 12 right here. Okay. And so this is all over 2a, and it's very important to remember it's all over 2a. Okay, so we've got all over 2 times a, which is just 2. Okay, so now we, we just follow our order of operations rules, and we're going to simplify here. So the order of operations is PEMDAS. Okay, that's PEMDAS, P-E-M, PEMDAS. And that you can remember that by thinking of Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. And basically what it means is parentheses, exponents and square roots, multiplication, division, addition and subtraction. So here's what we're going to do first. So we usually, we do what's in the parentheses first, or we do the exponents and square roots first. So what I want us to do is let's focus on everything that's underneath the square root first. 
focus on everything underneath the square root first. Okay, so this here we've got two times two, but that, that's not what I consider a parenthesis. A parenthesis would be like, even though I wrote two times two, a parenthesis like would be if we had some big, like something like this, right? Minus one. And let's say that this was all like multiplied by five. You would want to do the parenthesis first before you, you try to do like negative one times negative five. Okay. So that's what, that's all we mean here. So we're going to start by everything, doing everything underneath the square root. Okay, so underneath the square root, we've got this exponent here. So what's negative 5 squared? Well, negative 5 squared, that's the same as doing negative 5 times negative 5, which is going to give us positive 25, because negative times a negative is always going to be a positive. So if we write this down here, we've got 5 plus the square root of R of 25. Okay, and so now we're going to do, remember that you always want to do multiplication before you do addition or subtraction. So now we would do negative four times two, which is going to give us negative eight. And then we've got negative eight times negative 12, which is going to give us positive 96. Okay. And so then this is all over two times two, which we can just do that right now is four. Okay. So now what's 96 plus 25? That gives us 121. So I'm going to draw an arrow here showing that we're going to rewrite this. So you've got 5 and then plus the square root of 1, 21, all divided by 4. And we can put the x here if you want. I, you don't really need to, but we'll do it's x equals 5 plus the square root of 121 divided by 4. And remember, you also have to do minus 2 at the end. But like I said, we're going to start with plus. So what's the square root of 121? Well, the square root of 121 is 11, and you can get that in two ways. You can just plug the square root of 21 in to your calculator and press equal, and that's going to tell you that. Or you can just remember that 11 times 11 gives you 121, and therefore the square root of 121 is going to be 11. So knowing that, we've got 5 plus 11 divided by 4. Okay and that's equal to x. So now, I'm going to not write that equals to x right now, just to keep this simple. So what's 5 plus 11? Hopefully you know that 5 plus 11 is 16, and 16 divided by 4 is going to give us 4. Okay, so one of our solutions is going to be 4. So up here, let me just put x equals 4. So that's one of our solutions. So if we do the plus, we get four. So now let me go back back up a couple steps. Oops. Well, okay, we'll leave that. Let me get rid of all this junk here. And so we just said that that was x equals four. Okay, so now let me put our minus here. And so now let's do the same thing, except instead of adding, we're going to do subtraction here. So now we've got, let's see x equals 5 plus or minus 11 over 4. And so what's 5 minus 11? 5 minus 11 is going to give us negative 6. And we've got negative 6 over 4. And so now we can do a simplification here. And there's two ways to do this. You can divide it in your calculator, or you can just simplify your fraction. So we've got two even numbers here. So what we can do is we can divide a 2 out of each of these. So 6 divided by 2 is going to give us and I'll keep the negative sign here, is going to give us 3, and 4 divided by 2 is going to be 2. Okay, so that's our other solution. So we've got x equals 4, and we've got x equals negative 3 over 2. Okay, so those are the answers. x equals 4, x equals negative 3 over 2. And you'll definitely want to know how to do this. It's not actually that hard. Uh, you just have to make sure you plug everything in. I think it's actually easier than factoring, and once you get the hang of this, it's a lot faster then it really should only take you a minute or two than the way I explained it. I was explaining it slowly so we get all the steps here. Um, but one other thing, if you're going to forget it, it's going to help you just add the plus and minus. Just write that in every single step if you think that you're going to forget because you need to have both of those solutions. You need that solution for the plus and the solution for the minus. We've got that x equals 4 and x equals negative 3 over 2. So I, I wanted to start with the plus, so I didn't write the plus and minus every single time. But if, if you're going to forget to do that, just write the plus and minus in all of the steps and all of your work as you go throughout the process. Other than that, it's pretty simple. So you'll definitely, you won't have to memorize these. 
You won't have to memorize this formula, but you'll want to be familiar with using it. So go ahead now, if you didn't understand this, if you got stuck, then go ahead, rewind the video, pause it again, and try to do this on your own now that you've seen me do it. And if you got this, good, good luck to you on your test either way. But if you got this, give yourself a pat on the back because this is a tricky one. But like I said, it's not that hard once you've got some practice with it. So if you want more practice, go ahead, grab my free 50 problems down below and solutions for GD Math. This comes right out of my book, The GD Math Champion's Guide. That's where this problem comes from. You can get my written solution of this problem. And you'll also see my written solution for how to do it in factoring. And you'll see this on, written on a graph. And some other tips and tricks are in there too, of course. So you can get that down below for free. Thank you for watching. This is Parker from DesperateChampions.com. Have a good day and good luck on your test prep.